Hi guys, this is Ivy from Wampley here to show you how to fill out the Paycheck Protection Program form powered by Cross River to hopefully make things a little bit easier. In this particular video, our focus is going to be 100% on non-employer businesses, things like independent contractors, sole proprietors, etc., on how to be able to fill out the Paycheck Protection Program form for a first draw application. Let's go ahead and get started. First things first, you're going to be on a page that looks just like mine, where it's going to ask you for your general business information, your legal business name, in this particular case, it's my first and last name because I'm an independent contractor. Your DBA or trademark name, if you do doing business as another name, if applicable. Your business email address, business phone number, additional information. This will ask for things like your entity type. If you're not sure what your entity type is, go ahead and click on this drop down and select. And if you need help, you can click on this link right here that says help me choose my entity type. It'll ask for your social security number, your business start date, your number of employees, state of incorporation, and your NAICS code. If you're not sure what your NAICS code is, that's 100% okay. All you have to do is click right here on this bright blue hyperlink and it'll take you to a page where you can actually find that NAICS code and then enter it into the form as shown. Next, is this a franchise, yes or no, and have you previously received a Paycheck Protection Program loan? In this particular case, we're going to go ahead and click no. Then it's going to ask you for the business address. It's going to ask for the street, the city, state, zip code, and country. The cool thing is when you start to enter in your address, as shown, you can actually see there's a drop down. So all you have to do is select it from the drop down and it automatically fills out the address for you. Once you get to this page, it's going to ask for your owner information for things like your first name and last name. Will this be the primary contact for this application? Yes or no? Then it states that the primary contact will receive all correspondence regarding this SBA loan. Please ensure you have access to this email address. There's the email that we entered in on the previous page, our social security number, we're going to enter in our percentage of ownership, date of birth, mobile phone number, that way they can contact you in case they have questions, position, in this particular case it's going to be an independent contractor, and then it's going to ask for things like your veteran status, gender, race, and ethnicity. After you fill out all of those boxes to the best of your ability, it's going to take you to this section that asks for your home address. If it is the same as the business address as it is in my case, all you have to do is click this button that says same as the business address. Otherwise, go ahead and manually enter this in as we did on the previous page. If there's more than one owner of your particular business, in our case there's not because we're functioning as an independent contractor in this particular demonstration, go ahead and click add additional owner. Otherwise, go ahead and hit next step. Please do not refresh the page. It does take a couple of minutes. It's just going through and validating your information. After that, it's going to take you to a page that looks just like this, where it's going to ask you to go ahead and save your link so you can go ahead and get back into your application. I strongly recommend copying this link and putting it somewhere safe, as this is how you're going to get back to be able to fill it out at a later date if necessary. After that, it's going to take us into a questionnaire, where it's going to ask us a whole bunch of questions, which we're going to do together. First, is the applicant or any owner of the applicant presently suspended, debarred, proposed for debarment, declared ineligible, voluntarily excluded from participation in this transaction by any federal department or agency, or presently involved in any bankruptcy? Go ahead and click yes or no. Has the applicant, any owner of the applicant, or any business owned or controlled by any of them ever obtained a direct or guaranteed loan from the SBA or any other federal agency that is currently delinquent or has defaulted in the last seven years and caused a loss to the government? Yes or no? Is the applicant or any owner of the applicant an owner of any other business or have common management with any other business? Yes or no? Is the applicant, if an individual, or any individual owning 20% or more of the equity of the applicant, presently incarcerated or, for any felony, presently subject to an indictment, criminal information, arraignment, or by any other means by which formal criminal charges are brought in any jurisdiction? Yes or no? Within the last five years, for any felony involving fraud, bribery, embezzlement, or false statement in a loan application or an application for federal financial assistance, or within the last year for any felony, has the applicant or any owner of the applicant been convicted, pleaded guilty, pleaded nolo contendere, or, placed, or commenced any form of parole? Yes or no? 
is the United States a principal place for all residents, for all employees that are going to be used in payroll calculations? And our case, yes, because remember, it's just us as the independent contractor. Has the applicant received an SBA Economic Injury Disaster Loan, IDA loan, between January 31st, 2020 and April 3rd, 2020? Yes or no? In our case, no. Is the applicant a franchise that's listed in the SBA's franchise directory? Yes or no. And are you a highly seasonal business? Yes or no. After you filled those out, go ahead and go to the next step, where it's going to say the loan purpose. This is where we're going to be telling the government how we're planning on using these funds. You can use them for the following. Payroll, property damage, lease and mortgage interest, supplier costs, utilities, operations expenditures, protection expenditure, or other. In my particular case, I'm going to go ahead and click payroll. However, pl uh, please click everything and anything that's applicable to you. After that, it's going to ask how you file your taxes. As a corporation, as a partnership, as a nonprofit, or in our case, other. After that, it's going to ask for our annual gross payroll amounts. Then it's going to say, please select your payroll period to date. All amounts and documents should correspond to this end pay period. What it's asking is, do you want to use documentation from 2020 or 2019? In my case, we're going to click 2019. If you are an employer and file Forms 940, refer to Part 2, Line 3. We're not an employer, so we're going to skip that. If you report any self-employment income and file a Form 1040, refer to line 31, net profit amount. Let's go ahead and enter that in together. After that, it'll say things like, if you report any income as a partnership, this will be self-employment earnings from a partnership. Again, not applicable in our case. After that, it's going to ask us for things like your payroll calculations, group health insurance, in our case it's going to be a zero, retirement benefits, State and local taxes on employee compensation. Portion of wages in excess of $100,000 a year. Again, that's not in applicable in our particular case. After that, it states what our average monthly payroll is and what our maximum loan amount is. It fills out all this information for us. Underneath that, it's going to have our account and routing information. What you're going to do from here is you're going to enter in your routing number, re-enter in your routing number, account number, and your account number a second time. That way they can actually send you the funds in question. After that, go ahead and click next step. It does take a couple of seconds to validate the information. Just like last time, please do not refresh the page. Excellent. After you've gone ahead and filled that out, it's going to take us to this page that says confirm business and owner information, where it's going to have you go over and reconfirm everything you put into the document. So your general business information, additional business information, loan information, and your owner information. If you need to make any changes, go ahead and click this bright blue button. Otherwise, you can go ahead and continue, where it's going to ask you to be able to confirm your identity. So you're going to click this, and then you're going to click your name below. After that point in time, it's going to have us attest to the following. It says, I attest that I have not applied for a Paycheck Protection Program loan with another lender. If I applied for more than one, I understand that I can personally be liable for any duplicate loans. Go ahead and click, I confirm that I have not applied for a PPP with another lender. After that, it's going to have us um, understand the following. That you understand that by checking the box below, you are confirming that to the best of your knowledge, the business information you provided is accurate. That you have provided all owners of the business who own 20% or more of the company. The, res uh, the responses to the eligibility questionnaire are accurate and complete. The information provided in the PPP calculator is accurate as per the instructions. And this business is not in an eligible business. After that, it states that our company which is my last name, provides its written instructions to Cross River Bank and its affiliates, agents, or third-party service providers to obtain business and or credit reports about this in connection with this application. After you've gone ahead and read all of these, go ahead and click I'm electronically signing the authorization above and I give permission to Cross River Bank to obtain my personal credit report. After that, it gives some information about, I understand that based on the information I provided, I will need to provide all of the following. You're going to need to provide your driver's license, avoided check, your February 2020 bank statement or other kind of proof of business, and your IRS Form 1040 Schedule C. Once you scroll down a little bit, it gives a whole bunch of information about ineligible businesses. Feel free to read that to the best of your ability. And then you're going to click, I confirm and agree to all the statements above and click Submit eSign. Again, just like on the previous pages, do not refresh. Afterwards, it'll take you to a page that looks like this, where it says, Congratulations, you've almost completed your loan application with the SBA. Please take the time to find all the documents below and upload them. Please copy this link if you have not done so already. This is going to allow you to get back into your application so that you can continue if necessary. 
Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and go to Upload Required Documents. As it stated on the previous page, it's going to need four things from us. Our driver's license, a voided check, our February 2020 bank statement, and an IRS Form 1040 Schedule C. Let's go ahead and find those together. First, it's going to ask for a driver's license. So we're going to go to Choose Files. I'm going to go to my Documents folder, make it really easy. There's my driver's license, and we're going to press Open. Your driver's license does need to be in full color, and we need to be able to see all of the edges. Once you've uploaded it, go to where it says Select File Type, and mark that as being your driver's license. Next, it's going to ask for a voided check. The image must be horizontal. Again, make sure that it's accurate to the best of your ability. We're going to find that. We're going to press Open. We've got this right here. We're going to select our file type and call it a voided check. Scroll down a little bit. February 2020 Bank Statement. We're going to go right here to Choose Files. We're going to go to my bank statements, bank statement of February 2020. We're going to press open. Again, it's got that right there. We're going to select our file type. It's our February 2020 bank statement. And last but not least, it's going to ask for an IRS Form 1040 Schedule C. So again, we're going to scroll up just a little bit. We're going to choose our files. We're going to go to my documents. Here's my 1040. Press open. Again, we're going to go ahead and mark that as our IRS Form 1040 Schedule C. After that, you should see every single one of these has a little check mark next to all the information that you've gone ahead and submitted. It'll say you will not be able to proceed to the next step until all required files are uploaded. Mislabeling a document will cause delays in processing your loan. After that, go ahead and hit Submit Documents. It'll take you to a page that looks like this, where it says, are you ready to submit? This cannot be undone. This is very important. If you are not ready, please press no. If you are, make sure that you go ahead and press the yes button. Essentially, this is a quick thing to be able to say. If the documents are submitted wrong or ineligible, your application will be delayed and you may be required to start from the very beginning to revise the information. Go ahead and click yes if you feel 100% confident and comfortable. After you go ahead and click yes, it'll take up to 20 seconds, just like the last couple of screens. Please be patient. You do not have to refresh the page. Then, it's going to take you to a page that looks like this, where it says application complete. Thank you so much for your loan application. You can even click here to see additional status details. At this point in time, Cross River is going to reach out to you directly if they have any questions, comments, concerns, or run into any snags while processing your application, as well as giving you next steps um, once your application has been sent to the lender. At this point in time, if you do run into any questions, comments, or concerns, you can always feel free to reach out to us directly, though. Thanks!